What is up this year? LA in a minute. Now I'm here in downtown LA in front of Clifton's, which at one point was the largest public cafeteria in the world. And with good reason, the founder of Clifton's wanted to end world hunger. He didn't accomplish that, but he did end up giving away hundreds of thousands of free meals on the way to making Clifton's LA's favorite cafe. This is the story of Los Angeles landmark, Clifton's. Let's get into it. This is Clifford Clinton, the man who founded Clifton's by merging the first part of his first name, Clifford, and the last part of his last name, Clinton. He was the son of a family that had owned a hotel as well as a cafeteria called Clifton in San Francisco, where they had settled after migrating from Missouri in the 1880s. The family was very devout and they did missionary work in China and Clifford Clinton had went there multiple times as a young boy. It was on one of these missions in China that the Boxer Rebellion occurred. This was an attempt to drive all foreigners from China. And it was then that Clinton saw hunger and starvation firsthand and he vowed to spend the rest of his life feeding the hungry. After returning to San Francisco, the family eventually moved to Los Angeles in the 1920s. And it was there that they bought a troubled cafeteria style restaurant on Olive Street in downtown Los Angeles. But it was right in the middle of the Great Depression, 1931, that Clifton's officially opened. He was adamant about paying those in need, but he wanted to do it with a little flair. He operated by Clifton's golden rule, pay what you can and dine free unless delighted. He planned to pay the bills by making a half cent profit on each paying customer, a mind boggling financial rule that would exist for the next few decades. Clifford Clinton would often call Clifton's a poor man's nightclub. And during one 90-day period during the Depression, he fed 10,000 people for free. Wow. Clifton's continued to attract both paying and golden rule customers. And by 1935, they expanded. The new Clifton space on Broadway was massive. It had sculptures, murals, streams, waterfalls, even a tiny chapel inside the space. And he renamed it Clifton's Brookdale. Clifton's expanded the food menu, including offering vitamin fortified dishes for only a penny, as well as changing the decor, at one point incorporating a Polynesian theme. Clifton's really wanted dining to be rewarding, fulfilling, and fun, and he went all out, even remodeling the outside of the building. In the 1940s, Clinton and his wife sold the business to their children to turn their attention to a new project, Meals for Millions, a nonprofit that would distribute free food to starving and malnourished people all throughout the world. But the kids were good shepherds of Clifton's, expanding to 11 locations at one point and making it the most popular restaurant in Los Angeles by the 1950s. It became the largest cafeteria chain on the West Coast with locations in places like Lakewood and Century City, Woodland Hills and West Covina, Whittier, San Bernardino and Laguna Beach. Throughout the decades, Clifton's continued to be popular, especially as they continued their golden rule. But it became harder to maintain business with new dining options cropping up and profits dwindling. As customers dwindled, so did the locations. Soon there was only one Clifton's remaining, the one on Broadway, Brookdale. But even that closed down in 2010. It was renovated and reopened as Clifton's Republic, but that didn't last too long and it's been temporarily closed for quite a while now. So Clifton's is forever entrenched in L.A. lore, not just as its favorite cafeteria, but as the largest public cafeteria in the world for a point and a cafe that spread throughout Los Angeles and fed hundreds of thousands of hungry people with or without money. And for that reason and many reasons, Clifton will always be remembered fondly in Los Angeles. All right, L.A., it's been a minute.